one hand, if you want to place your other hand on the wall, as always, feel free. Here, just be very particular in our form. So there's slacking ways to do this, and then there's a good way to do it. Slacking way looks like this. Hunching forward, knee pushing forward, hips pushing back. Think about pushing your hips forward, straightening up that chest, pull your shoulders back, feel a little bit of stretch through your shoulders and your chest. Your left knee is pointing right to the floor, and then if you can, two hands on your shoe. And then we're going to get our calf involved here. We always like to try this little move. Let's go up onto our toe, a little bit of a balance, and go on back down. We'll try it on the other side. Let's go right foot up, shoulders back. Let's get that right knee pointing right down to the floor. And then hips push forward. So you might feel a little bit of a stretch through your hip flexors. And then if you can, two hands on your shoe. Feel a big stretch in your quad. And then same thing, you can hold this position and we're just gonna go up onto your toe. Come on back down. Let's do the other side. Same thing, let's go knees together. Left knee pointing straight down. You can go two hands on your shoe right away. Again, if you want to hang onto the wall, feel free. And then we'll go up onto our toe. Little pause at the top, come on back down. One more. Right knee pointing right at the floor. Two hands on your foot if you can. And then hips push forward. And then you know it, let's pop up onto that toe. And then come on back down. Nicely done. I'm going to get you to go into a sumo squat position. So we've got feet on a 45 degree angle. And just think in this one before we even start, take a look at my shoulders. Shoulders are generally, we hunch forward something like this. Let's go shoulders way back, chest up. Everyone do that with me. Let's go shoulders back, chest up. Chin sort of tucking in, kind of like we're pushing our chest forward as our shoulders come back. And then hands come out and just start to squat down, weight into your heels. Take a quick look at your knees. Knees should be out on a 45 degree angle right over top of your toes. Chest should be perfectly vertical. And let's push on back up, pushing through the heels. Try that again. Think about equal weight distribution through your two heels. We all have a stronger side and a weaker side, and we tend to favor that stronger side and continually to make it stronger and stronger. I always find I'm pushing my weight over into my right heel, so I've got to think left heel gets some of that weight, and then let's push on back up. Try it again. We're going to sit on down a little bit deeper. Chest up. Shoulders back equal weight into your heels. Toes could wiggle up off the floor because there's no weight in those toes. Push it on up. Nice. Let's go again. Sitting down even a little bit deeper. So eventually we're going to get thighs parallel to the floor. Chest is up. Should feel your lower back. Working to get your chest up and then push on up. Last one. Even this should feel a little burning in the thighs. And push on up. Nicely done. Let's come to the back of our mat and I'm going to get you to go into uh, right leg lunge. We're going to do a move here called a mobility lunge. I'm going to get you to go hands down onto the floor. And notice what I've done here. We've got quite a deep lunge in my front knee and we can support that weight with our two, two hands on the floor. So this shouldn't feel like a ton of work in that front thigh. Then I'm going to get you to move your left hand out to the side. Notice what I just did. And then right elbow is going to come down the inside, the instep of our right leg. So we're dropping our right elbow down as far as we can. You'll notice your right knee might turn out or flare to the side a little bit, and that's okay. From here, we're going to turn and twist, almost like a triangle pose in yoga, but with a bent knee, and then we'll come back down into, this is called a runner's position, like we're going to race, but to take off out of the starting blocks, and we're going to go chest comes up, knees still bent, don't straighten out that leg yet, and then push all the way back. So that last piece should be a fair bit of work in your front thigh. Let's try this on the other side. Left leg comes forward. We try and hit that 90 degree angle in the front leg. Then we come down into our runner's position. And straighten out your back leg. Should feel a little bit of a stretch in your right hip flexor. So we've got our left leg forward, right leg's back. Right hand moves out to the side and then we just start to slide left elbow down the inside of our left leg. And you'll notice, where does your elbow end up? Maybe it's on your calf, maybe it's on your ankle, maybe it's on your shoe some of you will be on the floor and then we'll turn keeping your front knee very bent so we don't want to straighten up our leg here left hand up to the ceiling and let's go two hands down chest comes up press it on back again fair bit of work in the legs nice little twist through the torso as well so we're getting our core warmed up come on forward right leg runners position left hand goes out right elbow comes down notice that right elbow dropping a little bit deeper than it did the first time arm goes up, hands back into runner's position, chest comes up, push it on back, let's go one more, left leg forward, 
We'll go left elbow dropping down the instep of our left leg. Turn and twist. Hands into runners. Chest up. Push it on back. Nicely done. Let's go arm circle. Forward arm circle, right arm. Five moves today. Um, some pretty intense moves. As always, I feel like I always say this, but it is so important. Just do whatever you feel is comfortable for your body. Let's go left arm forward circle. Challenge yourself. You want to be in a position where we're doing something that's increment incrementally more challenging. As we go through this program, we should see ourselves increasing the level of difficulty or increasing the number of reps or increasing our pace, whatever it may be. Let's go backward arm circle, right arm. But always within sort of that... Uh, safe zone where we feel like whatever we're doing isn't compromising what the ideal form would be or putting ourselves in any pain. Let's go left arm circle. Notice we got a little walk on the spot here just keeping your legs nice and mobile and then I'll get you to go big shoulder circles just a couple here. Our first move is a planking move so we're just trying to get our shoulders and our chest and our arms warmed up a little bit. Let's go forward arm or shoulder shrug shoulder circle and here we go first exercise like I said it's a planking move so we're gonna be in a straight arm plank so many different ways to do this uh, level number one you can be a modified straight arm plank and hang out here if we're hanging out here I want you to try and make your body work as oh there's a pun make your body work let's go squeeze your glutes belly button in everyone here even if you typically do a level four, I want you to come into this pose, pull your belly button in, make your abs work. Th this can be a very challenging move if we're really pulling our belly button in, activating that transverse abdominus, and squeezing glutes. Level number one. Next level, we're going to come into uh, straight arm plank. Hang out here, same thing, glutes squeeze, belly button in. Next level is a mountain climber. Staying nice and slow, so if you're doing a mountain climber, stay with the pace of this next move. Next move looks like this. We're going to come into a twisted mountain climber. So I go all the way over, touch my knee to my opposite elbow. Then I float my foot back, retouch, and then we're going to go into a donkey kick. So again, that's a crossover mountain climber, a mountain climber, and a donkey kick. I gave four general levels of difficulty. If you want to mix and match, try a donkey kick from your straight arm plank, feel free. We're going to be going quite slowly in this one. The slower, the harder it is. So, we're going to be here for 10 reps. Everyone into the start of whatever position you like. If you're doing the full twisted mountain climber, let's bring left knee up, touch your right elbow, float that foot back, touch your left elbow to your knee. Then we're going to go donkey kick. There's one. Let's go left knee, right elbow, left knee, left elbow, kick. Two. Left, right left left three left right left left four left right left left five left right left left six left right left left seven left right left left eight keeping hips low touch push last one touch, push, good, and everyone can come on up, fair bit of work, you'll feel it, glutes, tons in your shoulders, a little bit in your chest, tons in your core, of course we just did one side, so let's go into the other, we're going to come back into our starting position, think about this, if you're doing a plank, a regular plank, you're there for about 30 seconds, and then we'll do a second set, let's come into plank, ready, and we've got right crosses over, right touches, donkey kick, right crosses over, Right touches, donkey kick, three, kick. Here's number four, kick. Remember, staying nice and slow with my pace. Here's five, right to right, kick. Ready? Right to left, right to right, kick. Let's do four more. Right to left, right to right, kick. Three more. Right to left, right to right, kick. Just two more. Right to right, kick. Right knee, left elbow, right to right, kick. Whew. That should be a challenge. Come on up. We're going to go into a regular squat. So we've got feet right underneath hips. I want you to squat on down, weight into your heels. Take a look 
as we always talk about, nose, knees, toes. We're not here. We're not popping up under our toes. We're definitely not here. This is a fake squat. Legs are barely even bent, just chest is coming forward. We're here. Try it with me. Take a breath in. Sit a little bit lower. Hang out there. Knees are bent. Here's our move. Pulse. One, two, three. Staying low. We're going to jump our feet out wide. One, two, three. Good. Stand on up. Shake your legs out. Three narrow, three wide. Three narrow, three wide. We're here for 60 seconds. Let's try it together. Narrow stance. Feet stacked right under your hips. Sitting on down. Ready? Let's go. One, two, three. Chest is up. Jump it out. One, two, three. Your level of difficulty is determined by how low we're going. Our goal is to get the eyes parallel to the floor. Two, three. With chest up. Weight in your heels. One, two, three. Jump it out. One, two, three. Jump it in. I know thighs are burning. Chest is up. Feel your lower back really active right now. If your lower back doesn't feel like it's working, I guarantee you we're bending forward. We need to bring that chest up facing towards me. Jump it in. One, two, three. Jump it out. One, two, three. Chest up. Almost. Two, three. Jump it out. One, two, three. We've got ten seconds. One, two, three. Jump it out. One, two, three. Last one. One, two two, three, jump it out, one, two, three, stand it up, shake those legs out, I know, right away into a metabolic exercise here, so we're going to get our heart rate going, let's go hands at our hips, feet together, and jump it out, jump it in, we've got a jumping jack, nice and easy, you can go here, you can pick up your pace, you know the next level, we're going to go into star jump, you know the rule for star jump. Feet go out, feet come in, all in one jump. It does not look like this. Notice where my feet ended up way out here. Looks like this. Feet come right back into the center. So we're going to be going for 30 star jumps. Jumping jack people, go as hard as you can. Ready? Feet together, hands in. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and done. Quick little note, if you're doing a star jump, hands come up, touch right over top of your head. Let's not quit right here. Get them up over your head. Come on down. Oh, nice little relaxation on the floor. We're going to go feet up, toes pulled in. Level number one, hands on the floor. Belly button pulls in. All we're doing is flattening out our back. Next level, hands come up. Touch your knees, touch your shins. Whatever you can touch that feels comfortable. Level four, we're going for toes. We're here for 10 pulses. And then there's a little twist. Try this with me. Let's go for one, shoulders down, two, shoulders down, three, shoulders down. Think about straight knees. Toes pull into your shins. Five, six, good. Seven, you're going to notice this is a fair bit of strengthening for your neck muscles. If it ever becomes too much, let your head relax for a rep. And ten, good. Hanging out here, I just want you to drop one leg, float it off the floor, or continue to hold two legs off the floor. Let's go for one, two, it's only five, three, four, five. We're going to switch over. One leg up, one leg down, one. Two, three, four, five, and relax. That should be a huge amount of work in your abs. Next exercise, heels pull in. Knees are just the width of your hips. 
make sure that as we do this exercise, let's try it together. It's a hip thrust, hands down, hips up, level one, pause here, everyone's here. Take a look at your knees. Your knees should be the width of your hip bones as opposed to out much wider. You're gonna notice your knees want to flare out, don't let them. Knees pull back in, come on back down. Level number one. We're gonna be practicing, if you wanna try a harder level today, a crossover. So you can cross your right ankle over your left, over your left knee. Same thing, hips come up, hands can be on the floor. Same if you're doing two legs versus one leg, you can do hands up or hands down. Try this with me. Let's all start in our starting position. Two legs, one leg, hands wherever you choose. Take a breath in, and then exhale. <sighs> Hips up, little hold at the top. Come on back down. Try it again. <sighs> so right now, this is our cardio rest period. We're working our hamstrings, our glutes, our lower back, but our heart rate should be coming back down to normal, getting prepped for our next round. Breath in, <sighs> hips way up. I often talk about this, we should have a straight line from our knee to our shoulder. So it'll be your planted foot. In this case, my left foot is down. So from your left knee to your left shoulder should be a straight line. Hips need to be way up, in other words. Come on back down. Let's do another four on this side for one. Just that little one second pause at the top. Two, good, again, <sighs> three, and four. Good, we'll switch it over. You'll get a good view here. Right knee to right shoulder, nice straight line. Nice thing about doing this crossover, two things. It gives us a little bit of stretch in our glute. Looks very familiar to some of you, figure four. This is very similar to the figure four stretch. And then at the same time, it provides a little bit of resistance through the tightness of our glute, pushing down onto our thigh, makes this hip thrust a little bit more challenging. Let's go, hip up, <sighs> breath in on the way down, try it again, exhale up, breath in on the way down, again, <sighs> that's it. Think about what I, was, what I mentioned, hip way up, straight line, shoulder to knee. <sighs> Good. And if you're doing this level, cross-legged, hip thrust, arms up, can you feel a little bit of sway? So there should be some instability. We're sort of in a tripod, two shoulder blades down and then one heel down. Yeah, that's where our core strength really comes in, into play. Good. Let's just do two more on this side. For one, that's it. Push that right heel to the floor. Two, come on back down. Nice. Grab your water, and we'll get set up for round number two. What do you feel? What's being targeted in today's workout? You should notice a ton of core, as we usually do. A lot of legs today as well. Let's come into straight arm plank. Remember, you can just hang out modified straight arm plank on your knees or put it on your toes. Let's go left, touches right, touches left, donkey. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, nice slow pace, eight, nine, ten, come on down, you can shake your wrists out, I know that's a lot of holding on that 90 degree angle, if you ever want to do this, holding onto a dumbbell or a push up handle or something, straighten out your wrist, feel free. Let's go into our straight arm plank. Right knee, one, two, three. There's a rep. One, two, three. There's a rep. Think about in that donkey kick, heel goes to ceiling. So we've got a bent knee when we do that donkey kick. Heel pushing to the ceiling. Good. Let's do five. Touch, touch.
touch, kick, touch, touch, kick, touch, touch, kick, good, touch, kick, last one, so much work in the stomach, we're setting up into our squat position, we've got 60 seconds on the clock, let's go three, two, one, we're down, pulse, one, two, three, chest up, stay low, one, two, three, so in this one, our hips are just bobbing up and down, two inches maybe, chest is always up, facing forward, we got wides, one, two, three, narrow, one, two, three, nose, knees, toes, all in alignment, two, three, narrow, we're halfway done, one, two, three, step it wide, one, two, three, bring it in, one, two, three, again, step it wide, stay low, chest up, you can, yes, narrow, 15 seconds, wide, one, two, three, three, please chest up, make that low back work, this is more than just a leg exercise if we do it properly, two, three, last one, one, two, three, step it wide, two, three, wow, <laughs> shake it out, <sighs> we've got jumping jacks or star jumps, let's go, feet together, hands by your side, ready, let's do it, one, two, three, four, five, six, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. All right, should be going. Come on down. If you're doing a star jump, think about getting some distance between your feet. So we're really stepping wide when we go into that star jump. All right, here we go. Uh, legs are up. Toes pulled in. One, head touches. Two. Knees as straight as possible. Five, six, seven, nice. Eight, nine, ten. Let's go right leg down for one, two, three, four, five. Switch it. One, I know it's tough. Two, almost done though. Three, four, five. Oh, that is exhausting. Let's go left leg planted, right leg over. Or you can have two feet, hands down, hands up, your choice. For one, come on down. Two, breath in. Three, even though I said this is a rest station for cardio purposes, it shouldn't be a rest. I want you driving your left heel into the floor, thrusting those hips up, squeezing your glutes, your left glute, your left hamstring, and your low back should be doing a ton of work right now. Push, breath in, push. Let's do four. For one, let's get a little more height on these last three. Good, just two more. And last one. Good. And you come down for a moment. Let's switch over if you're doing a one-legged version. Think about this. When we bring our hips down, they're just lightly touching the floor. We're not actually breaking. Take a breath in. And then we're up. One. Two. Again. Three. Again. Four. Nice. Six, seven, that's it, eight, nine, 
Last one. Make it a high one. Ten. Come on down. Good. Let's grab our water. Whew. Quick little cardio recover. Recovery. We're back into our twisted mountain climber plus a donkey kick. Tough exercise. Think about what you're working here. We've got arms, shoulders, core, some hips, and then our glutes and that kick. Ready? Let's go into plank. Let's start by moving our right knee to left elbow for one, two, kick. One, two, kick. Here's an appropriate pace. Two, kick. Try and physically touch knee to elbow if you can. Kick. Here's five. Kick. One, two, kick. Four more. One, two, hips stay low. Kick. One, two, kick. Two more. One, two, kick. Last one. Two, kick. Nice. Quick little shake of the wrist. We're back in the plank. Ready? We've got one, two, kick. One, two, kick. Hips stay low again. Two, kick. Twist, touch, kick. That's it. Five to go. One, two, kick. Touch right, touch left, kick. Touch right, touch left, kick. Let's do two more. Kick, last. You should notice some cardio, even in that move. Moving so many different muscles. I'm dripping in sweat. <laughs> this suggests something. Let's set up. Uh, heels right under your hips. Sit it down. And let's go. One, two, three. Step it out. Remember our goals. Low hips, elevated chest. Step it out. Three. Step it in. That's it. Good. It doesn't have to be a super wide stance. We're just jumping out maybe four or five inches on either side. Jump it in. Good. Step it out. Just over halfway. Chest up again. Come on, make your lower body, your lower back nice and active. Step it out. One, two, three. Yep. In. One, two, three. Ten seconds. Step it in. One, two, three. Chest is up. We're going to go one more set. Here we go. One, two, three. You can. Two, three. Oh, wow. Well done. You stay with me. Shake those legs. Heart rate is going. We've got feet together. Hands by your hips. 30 star jumps. Think about distance between your feet. Think about touching those hands over top of head. Ready? Let's go. Four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. Twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, thirty. Heart. Oh, it's flying. If you read my blog, you probably read me write about or see me write about interval training for athletes, for people that are looking to get lean or lose weight. This is what we want. High, high heart rate, short bursts, maximum intensity. Let's go. Feet up. Touch. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two.
two, stay with me. Three, modify if you need. Four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, those are becoming short little crunches by the end. Let's come on down. Right leg's planted, left ankle over right knee. Let's go. Hands down or hands up. Breath in. Push for one. Breath in. Push. Two. Again. Three. Four. Feel good. Knowing we're almost at the stretch period. Six. High hips. Seven. That's it. Hips are up. Push. Eight. I really recommend driving your right heel into the floor as opposed to flat foot on the floor. And let's switch. There's all, all kinds of research, research that shows that that activates your glutes a lot more. Notice how my toes, left toes pulling off the floor. Ready? For one. Two. Notice where if you're doing a cross-legged hip thrust, check out your right knee. If your right knee is pointing up to the ceiling, try and push it down, flattening out your shin, make your shin parallel to the floor. You might notice a little bit of a stretch in your right glute. It's a nice little byproduct of this exercise, kind of like that figure four stretch that we sometimes use. Good. Let's go for five. For one, last four. Hips really get high. Two. That's it. Three four, and five. Nice. All right, grab your water, and let's stretch this out. Let's go into hip flexor lunge. Hands on your hips, shoulders pull back. Take a quick little look up to the ceiling. Your chest is facing slightly up to the ceiling, so we've got a little bit of a backward bend happening. Take a big breath in, rib cage gets big. Exhale, left hip goes down to the floor. Looking for a huge stretch right here in your left hip flexor. Secondary stretch, chest and shoulders. So think about opening up that chest, pulling your shoulder blades back together. Good. Same thing this time, the left hip, left uh, foot forward, right hip forward and down. Hands on your hips, chest open. Allow that little backward bend to happen. So chest facing up to the ceiling. Take a big breath in. Exhale. Check in with your heart rate. I know I say it all the time, how quickly your heart rate recovers after doing an intense interval of cardio. That determines our level of fitness, or cardiovascular fitness at least. Hopefully right now you can have a little conversation. We're not gasping for air anymore. We've been out of exercise for about two minutes. Let's go knees right underneath hips and then heels, toes right behind our knees. So we're very square through our lower lower part of our legs down to our toes. And then let's go hands forward or into a child's pose. Elbows straight, elbows off the floor, forehead to floor. And then just work on your breath. Quite often we'll, we'll do a stretching, an extra stretching uh, series here that'll look something like this. On our breath in, we reach fingertips forward. Notice what that does, that lengthens through our torso, so you might feel a little stretch in your lats, maybe a little bit in your shoulders. And then on our exhale, we allow our hips to go back. Hands slide along the floor. And as our hips push back, you'll feel a little bit of extra stretch through our knees and through our hips, maybe a little bit into your ankles. Try it again, breath in. Pulling forward, feel that length through our torso. Exhale, pushing back, feeling a deepening stretch into our hips. Let's
Let's try two more. Make sure you're moving on your breath. Breath in, hands forward. Exhale, hips back. One more. Breath in, hands forward. Exhale, hips back. Nice. And we'll come down to our knees. First thing we're going to do, take those shoulders, roll those shoulders way back. So even this should feel like a little bit of a stretch. We're just opening up all these pushing muscles, whenever we're holding a plank, when we're doing that twisting mountain climber, so much work going through here. So let's open up our chest, open up our shoulders. And then as we do here, hands together, you can interlace your fingertips if you like. And we're going to reach up, going into a bit of a backward bend. So your eyes just take a look up to your hands, which are right above your head. Chest is slightly facing up to the ceiling. And then let's release our hands. Thumbs push back. As arms fall to the floor. The backward bend is key here, so my chest is slightly facing up towards the ceiling as opposed to facing directly towards you. We're trying to turn it up to the ceiling and let gravity then pulls our hands and our arms down, creating a stretch through our front shoulder and into our pecs. Try it again. Breath in. Exhale. One last. Good. Let's stay ideally in this Japanese position. Just get that nice little stretch here for our quads. Let's go shoulder roll out, shoulders up to the ears. And be really conscious of these movements. Let's go shoulders back. And again, looking for that chest stretch, shoulders down away from the ears, making a really long neck, shoulders forward and then right back up. And this should just be a very relaxing pose, releasing any tension from our planks, from our crunches when we're working on our neck muscles so much. Let's go reverse shoulder shrug. It's amazing, we don't realize how much work is done through our neck when it just has to hold the weight of our head until we do 20 crunches with no support for our head. It gets very challenging very quickly. And nice. We're just going to end where we started. I'll get you to come on up. So much quads today, all those uh, pulsing squats. So let's go left foot planted and then right heel into our bum. You can go one hand on the wall, one hand on your foot two hands on your feet if you can. Just make sure your right knee is pointing straight at the floor, hips pushing forward, open up that chest. And then heel towards bum. Practice a little bit of balance here. I know with tired legs it makes it tough. Good. Last one. Whatever pose you're doing, even if you're doing this with one hand on the wall, still think shoulders back. It makes a huge difference when we're really intentional about getting a stretch for our upper body as well as our leg. If you get two hands on your shoe, the advantage is two hands on your leg kind of does that stretch for you for the most part. If you're doing it with one hand, you'll still get the stretch. You just really need to think about pulling those shoulders back. And that's it. Nice. Thanks for sticking with me. Um, as always, I'll be back in a couple days. I've got another great workout planned for you, and I hope to see you here. Take care.